The theory of special relativity needs some context, otherwise it is easy to misunderstand. Before special relativity, and especially general relativity, can be talked about, one needs to know what is meant by relative. Imagine, if you will, a man walking down a road with cars passing him by. The cars are obviously travelling faster than the man, but how much faster? Let's say that he is walking at 3 miles an hour, and the car at a typical 30 miles an hour. So the car is going 27 miles an hour faster than him. But 3 miles an hour compared to what? It obviously isn't compared to him. So how do you measure the speed of the man? You can imagine putting up mileposts and seeing how many of the posts have passed in an hour. But this is picking a frame of reference, a place where you are measuring from. Here we are measuring relative to the ground. But what when you are the man walking? Does the relative speed change? Classically, no, there is no difference. You can measure it from this frame by carrying a 27 mile long pole as you walk and noticing that the car will go past the end of the pole in just about an hour. And so it is still travelling at 27 miles an hour compared to you. Also, you have not moved relative to the pole, you are holding it, you are always at the end. In this example, we have seen that the Earth is a useful reference frame. This is because we are all on the Earth, and so it gives a common way to measure speeds. But what in the nothingness of space? There is no structure from which we can measure. We need to look at how one observer sees it. That is, if one was stood in that spot, how would it look? So classically, the way you would go to a new observer is by adding the speed of the observer relative to your current frame. But it turns out that this is wrong, but only when you're dealing with very very fast speeds. The theory describing how this works is called special relativity. Before I talk about it, it is worth saying where its origins lay. Maxwell's equations describing the unifying of two forces, electricity and magnetism, can be used to derive a wave equation. A consequence of the equation shown is that you have an electromagnetic wave. The speed at which this wave travels is about 8 times 10 to the 9 meters per second. This is the known speed of light. However, this causes a problem. The laws of physics now depend on how fast light travels. But relative to what? Or does every possible speed have its own physics? For more, you should read about Einstein's postulates. To cut a long story short, one can fix this by allowing the speed of light to be a constant in all frames of reference. However, then you need to do something about, about distance and time. The simple equation for speed is the velocity equals the distance over time. So, if we require the speed of light to be a constant, we need x and t to act oppositely to each other. When x grows, t needs to contract, and vice versa. This is weird as it means a metre from one observer is not a metre for another observer. Hence we have arrived at the concepts of length contraction and time dilation. The best way to understand this is to see how it works. It is interesting to note what happens to these equations when the velocity of the frame goes up to the speed of light. We see that we end up dividing by zero, and so the idea breaks down. Physically however this is okay as anything with mass can never be accelerated to the speed of light whereas light is the only known massless particle. But as we get closer to the speed of light, all distances get closer to zero, and all times get closer to infinite. And so we could think of a photon experiencing all of time and space at once. But this shouldn't be taken too literally. Finally, it is worth noting that just multiplying the ages of the universe by the speed of light does not give you the size of the universe. It doesn't even tell you how far you can see into space, but it is a good estimate. This is because a special relativity is a local theory, only applicable for points in space near each other. To talk about the universe on large scales, general relativity needs to be used. And as general relativity predicts curvature, the speed of light times age is no longer correct.